In this session, I will show you how you can create an account for your customers. Having an account means they will be able to log in into your store with their email address and a password. Then they will be able to change things like their information, their shipping details, their payment method, etc. Et Which also means that if you enable this feature, if you create an account for your customer, then you will save this information. You will save the shipping details. You will save the payment information. So when the customer comes back, he will be able to place an order so much faster than the first time because his information are already saved. Plus, we can create an account without adding an extra step on the checkout, which means creating an account for your customer can be very simple, very quick, seamless, I would say, and it doesn't add extra work at the moment of a checkout process. So it's very cool. To me, there's a lot of advantages of doing that. So if it's something that fills your business, then this is something that you probably want to do. So let's go. Let me show you how it works. Here we are on my store. First thing to do is to go to the settings. So we go to the dashboard, then settings, and then accounts and privacy. Then here you will find the different settings to enable or disable this feature. So the first option is regarding guest checkout. Do you want people to place an order without creating an account? And do you want people to be able to log in in your store during checkout? So if you create an account for your customer, you definitely want to tick this box so people can log in and access their information. Then you can let people create an account during the checkout process and on the My Account page. So most of the time, we only want them to create an account when they buy something. For e-commerce, we don't need people to create an account by themselves on the My Account page. It doesn't really make sense. They will use the My Account page to see their orders, to change their details and things like this. So if they don't place an order, it doesn't really make sense for them to have an account. So from here, we leave these things like this. But if it's something that you want to do, you can enable it here. Then to make the checkout process faster, then you can enable the next settings. It will automatically generate the username for the person. This is good because it really doesn't add any extra step on the checkout process. I will show you that just after. And you can also see the next box to send the user a link to set their password. So this way, after they buy, when they have their account, they will receive another email that says, hey, set up your own password on our store. So once again, it doesn't add any extra step on the checkout process. So this is pretty cool. Then the next settings are about deleting the data. We will come back to it in a second. But first, let me show you how the account creation looks on the checkout. So for doing that, I will open a new window in incognito mode. So this way we are not logged in our store because here we already have an account. We are logged in. So if we go to the checkout process, we already have an account. It's not going to ask us to create a new account, right? So that's why we want to open a new window in incognito mode. So let's do that. Okay. Now I will go to my store. So great, here we are on our store. So we will go to the checkout page. For doing that, we first need to add a product to our cart. So I will go to one of my products, add it to cart, and then go to the checkout. So let's go. Product, then add to cart. Great, then view cart, and then checkout. Okay, perfect. So this is the checkout that we designed earlier into this course. And now let's see how the different options for account creation impact the checkout. So let's go back to the settings. So first, let's check how it looks when we don't create an account for our customer. So we want to allow them to place orders without an account. We don't want them to log in because there is no account. We don't allow them to create an account during checkout. And then we don't need that neither and this one neither. Then we save. Okay, then let's go back to our store and refresh the page. Okay, great. So this is how the checkout looks like when there is no account creation. So people can just put their details and then they can place an order. So it's very simple and straightforward, but they don't have an account, which means we don't save their information. So now let's see how it looks when we create an account for them. Okay. So here we're back in the settings. Now let's create an account for our customer. So we disable this one. We want them to be able to log in. We want them to create an account in the checkout, not on the My Account. We automatically generate the username. And first, let's keep these two options here disabled. Let's save. Okay, let's go back to our store and refresh. So now we have these two additional fields here, account username and account password. Okay, that's cool. Then if at the same time we allow them to place an order without an account, I will show you how it looks. Let's save. Let's go back to the checkout. 
now there is this little option here that gives them the choice. They can create an account and then set up their username and password, or they can also not do it. It's optional, it's up to them. If you ask me what I prefer, I prefer my customers to have an account on my store. So again, we save their data and then it's much easier for them to purchase again in the future. So I don't really want to give them the choice. And especially because first we can remove the username extra field by just enabling this option here. Let's save, go back to our checkout. So now we don't have the username field in the checkout because it generated automatically. So this is pretty cool. We can even remove the account password field by just enabling the last option here. Okay, let's go back. So now our checkout looks exactly the same as the checkout where we don't create an account for our customer. There is no extra field for people to create an account, but they have an account, which means we save their information for future purchase. So it's cool, but I think it's unclear here that they have an account. And if people don't know that they have an account, then it loses all the benefits of creating an account. So to me, the best thing to do is to keep the password field. So people can set up their password on the checkout page and then they know that they have an account and also they know their password. So it's better this way. So let's change it again. We just disable this one and we save again. Okay, perfect. Let's see now our checkout. Okay, perfect. So now people can create an account, set up their password and everything is pretty easy and very fast. So. Now there's just one thing that we need to do is to allow them to log in on their store. As we did a custom checkout page previously in this course, we did not have the module that allow people to log into their store. So if on your store, you did not customize the checkout as much as we did, you might have the option already on your checkout that lets people log in to their accounts. So that's good. But I like to do a lot of customization in this course so I can show you more things. And now we'll show you how to add this little module that will allow people to log in on your checkout page. So for doing that, we go to the theme builder. So let's go back to the settings and then my store page, then theme builder, then checkout. And here we are going to add a new section. And then we will add a new row with the module who notice and we will choose page type we will choose checkout page okay we just need to change the color white then body text in white then we can change the little star here in red Okay, then we can change the button style to match our button. Okay, text in white, but border in red. Okay, and also into body text, into the link color, we can change the link text color to red. Then we just need to make sure that here into the field, the placeholder is white but the text is in black otherwise it's not going to work so okay we just put the text in black then we save and we take this row on the top okay perfect so here it's all open so we can see how it looks like but on our checkout page it will be closed it will be nicer so let's save it okay great now let's go back to our checkout page let's refresh Okay, perfect. So now people can log into their account. They just need to click here to log in. They can enter their email address, their password, and then they can log in. So perfect. And also we have coupon enabled on our store. So that's why they can also apply a coupon to their order. We will cover the coupon later in this course and we will see how to enable or disable them. Okay, perfect for that. We can go back and close the visual builder. Then we can go back to the settings, accounts, now we have done the process of people creating an account on our store. Then you can see all your user list and all the people who have an account on your store by just clicking this button here, access user list. For now, we don't have any customers on our store. So that's why there's only me into this list. But once we will get orders and customer, everybody that has an account on our store will be displayed here into this page. So that's cool. We can go back. And then when people have an account on your store, they will be able to log in on your My Account page and they will be able to see a few things. So let me show you that. Let's go to the store. Okay, let's go to the My Account page. 
here on the My Accounts page, we will be able to see their orders, the subscription, if you have subscription enabled on your store, the download they have access to. If you sell virtual product, they can change their address and their account details as well. And once again, all your customer information are saved, so then they can place an order very fast on your store. So that's really cool. And then the last thing to cover into this section are all the settings here about deleting the data that we get when people create an account. So here it's mainly to be compliant with the laws into some countries that force you to delete data upon customer request. They can ask you to delete their data and by law you should do that. So when you do that, how do you want to manage the data, for example, of the order? Do you want to delete them as well? So which means you won't have any more information about like who placed this order. Also, how to do it with subscription, if you have subscription on your store. If you sell downloadable product, do you want to also remove their access? So it's really up to you and how you want to manage this data from your users. And the last settings will let you remove the personal data of your customer directly from the order page. So this way you can remove the data from multiple locations at the same time. So that's pretty cool. And with the two last settings, you can modify the default text that will be displayed when people create an account on your store. By default, this is the text that will be displayed when people create an account. If you want to change it, you can. The little privacy policy like this means that it will be written privacy policy, but when people click on privacy policy, it will lead them to your privacy policy page. So it will put the link of this page directly on your text. So this is pretty cool. So this is what we want to do. And just make sure that your privacy policy page is set up into advanced tab and here into terms and conditions. So for example, I don't have it, so I will just add it now. Okay, then save. Okay, now let's go back to our store and let's refresh the page. Okay, great. Now we have a little option here where people can agree to our terms and condition, which is very important, which is very important. So you want to make sure that you have that on your store. That's it on how you can create account for your customers and save their information for future purchase. So now let's keep going and I will see you in the next session.